L. Okay, so exercise 10A, uh, you have everything except the working of the electric bell. Something that you need to uh, put a little more stress on is uh, direction of magnetic field. Uh, there are two things in that. First is a current carrying wire placed in a, uh, you know, so the magnetic field is circular and the direction is given by the right hand thumb rule. So that you should know. And the second part is uh, when you have a wire, which is like this, and there is, uh, you know, current is flowing in this. So how do you identify uh, which end is north and which end is south? So these are the two important things. There will be a lot of diagram based questions in that. Okay, which are there in that exercise uh, as well. We discussed this last class very uh, in detail. Then uh, in exercise 10A, uh, 10B, okay, 10B, something that you don't have that I'm writing. So uh, 10.12, is not included, that is the DC motor, okay? So DC motor working is not included. 10.11 uh, is there. And exercise 10C, okay, you have uh, this part which is not there, is 10.15 is not included. Then you have 10.18 is not included. Okay. And in 10.16 that is there, uh, you have only advantages, means uh, comparison between alternating current and direct current. Okay, so that 10.17 uh, is also not there. So 10.17 is also not there. Okay, AC generator, DC motor. So I hope these markings are very clear to you. Uh, what is included and what is not included. Right. Now today, what we are going to see is uh, a very simple, but a very nice experiment. Uh, that was conducted by Michael Faraday. And uh, so this experiment talks about uh, a very simple thing, like say this is a coil like this. Okay. And this coil, either you have a galvanometer or you can uh, have the same coil. Instead of a galvanometer, you have a bulb like this. Okay. So and there is a magnet. So this is south, uh, north and south. And as you bring the magnet closer or you take away, uh, there is deflection in the galvanometer. Or if uh, this is a bulb, the bulb will glow. Are you following that? Okay, so either you take the magnet closer to this or you take the magnet away, it will glow. So, you know, that's a question like, how is it happening? Because as you can see, compared to uh, diagrams like this, where there is a power source, there is no power source over here. So that means whenever there is a magnetic field associated with the coil changes, there will be EMF induced in the coil. Okay. So what I'm saying, I'm writing it over here. So just a minute. So the magnetic field associated with the coil changes, there is a EMF induced in the coil. Okay, so this part is uh, important to understand. Okay, magnetic field associate, associated with the coil changes, there is EMF induced in the coil. So what we will also see is, um, Okay, let's first see this experiment. 
Okay. So this is a, a bar magnet. And what I want you to notice is this bar magnet, when it is moved in and out of the coil, you can see that the bulb is glowing. Okay. So this is uh, south. Now, if I change it, it becomes not. It is brought closer, taken away. The bulb is glowing. Now, this experiment can be easily performed in the lab as well. And you can see that. Only thing is that the bulb uh, should be such that it should glow with a small current because this magnet is not, not going to make more current over there. Okay. Then uh, instead of a bulb, if you have a galvanometer, you can see that it is pointing at the zero in center. So when the north is brought closer, you can see the galvanometer is also deflecting. Okay. Any questions uh, after listening or uh, seeing this? Do you have any anything that comes to your mind? Okay, so henceforth, like if you have some questions, you should directly ask, uh, fine. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate something. Uh, after that, I do generally ask, uh, like, you know, why do you think this or what do you think has happened? Uh, but if you wish to answer that, you can do so, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you us uh, two things. So let me show you the first part of it. Okay, so this is the first part. And now I'm going to show you the second part. Okay, again, uh, I, I will ask if somebody has to say anything in this. Okay, fine. So, uh, this is a magnet and this magnet has a magnetic field. The coil has a, has a magnetic field associated with this at this particular point. So like the magnet position is over here and the magnetic field associated with the coil. When the magnet is over there, I'll call it as B1. Okay. Now, if I move the magnet closer now, okay, like this, the magnet is over here. Now you can see that there are more magnetic field lines. The magnetic field associated, I call it as B2. So I hope you all agree that B2 is greater than B1. That means the change in magnetic field, okay, that is given by B2 minus B1. So the change in magnetic field is what causes EMF. So as long as the change happens, there will be, uh, you know, EMF induced that we saw earlier also. What I was doing in the first case, I was bringing the magnet slowly. Okay, the magnet was brought slowly towards the coil and taken away. I hope you notice that. And the second case, I was doing it faster. So when I was doing it faster, the bulb was glowing much brighter. That indicated there is more current flowing in the coil. So I will demonstrate that again uh, in, in case right now I'm using a voltmeter. So suppose if I'm taking the magnet uh, away or closer and I'm doing, doing that ever so slowly, Okay, and you can see the pointer deflecting. And if I do that faster, so you can see that, uh, you know, it, it is just uh, hitting the two sides. So that means the EMF that is induced does depend upon the change in the magnetic field. That means, you know, how much is the change? 
so like for example if i uh, just bring the magnet from <clears throat> here to here there will be less change but when i'm bringing it it's almost zero to maximum and also it depends upon the time the time that it takes now according to faraday he he wrote this as uh, you know d phi by dt so basically this this you don't need to pay attention to just you can imagine that there's a change in the magnetic field okay and dt is the time taken and you can see that it is inversely proportional that means less the time more will be the em okay so this is the faraday's experiment any questions so you have e equal to d phi by dt okay now moving ahead from here uh, what we have is uh, lenz's law now what lenz did lenz added a negative sign over here okay so lenz added a negative sign the statement which uh, lenz's law gave is it's very good uh, you know i'll i'll write it down over here I want you to read it and understand it. the direction of the current induced in the coil is such that it opposes the cause of it okay a very simple uh, statement gives a lot of meaning okay and because of lenz's law we have a minus sign over here okay so this negative sign is due to lenz law right okay and this is the statement of the lenz law now what does the statement tell you the direction of the induced emf is such that it opposes the cause of it now when i'm bringing a north near this coil there is emf induced in the coil now what is the cause of the emf <clears throat> the cause of the emf is motion of the magnet because the magnet is moving closer to the coil there is emf induced in the coil so it should oppose it the direction of the induced current should be such that it should oppose the emf okay so now the question arises is that how do you oppose a north moving towards a coil okay this is a north of a magnet how will you oppose that okay again uh, anyone would like to answer this okay to oppose north this face should also behave like north that means the current should be flowing anti clockwise so <clears throat> i'll show you something so here this is a north i'm bringing north closer and you can see that this pointer is deflecting to the left now i am taking north away it is deflecting to the right so again the north is moving away so how to oppose it it should behave like south because then it will oppose the north moving away okay so uh, fine if you uh okay i'll show it to you again i'm bringing the north closer it is moving to the left i'm taking north away it is moving to the right now if i change the poles this is south so you can see that it is moving to the right taking it away it is moving to the left so the direction does change okay so uh, that is lenz law now the the reason why uh, you know lenz law is important because this talks about uh, uh this thing conservation of uh, charge okay Conserv uh, it's a law of conservation of energy the reason why i am saying this because if this is the north pole of the magnet which is moving towards a coil and if the coil the current induces clockwise which is like a south pole it will attract the magnet now because it will attract the magnet the uh, the magnet will move uh, you know like towards the coil automatically 
and therefore there will be more emf induced without any work being done okay so remember this is against the law now if you have a coil and if there is a magnet and this magnet has been brought closer and the current induced is anti clockwise then this is behaving like not so there is mechanical energy spent to bring the uh, north pole near the face of the coil because it is opposing it now that mechanical energy does get converted into electrical energy over here so therefore lenz law okay obeys the conservation principle so this is what you have in this particular chapter okay in uh, in this particular exercise the c exercise after that uh, if you uh, look at 1. Point, uh, sorry 10.16 that is advantages of alternating current over direct current okay so in that what you have is the first point uh, it is cheap and easy to generate ac than dc so remember one thing all the turbines uh, thermal power station hydel power station they all generate electricity in the form of alternating current so it is cheaper to generate alternating current compared to direct current so that's point number 1 the second point is the efficiency of a ac generator is higher than the dc generator efficiency as in uh, you know that there are uh, if you have any function which is on the out, outside outside the city or something uh, you make arrangement for generators generators are the one which are like a power backup which will uh, generate electricity in case there is no electricity now when you are using fuel like diesel or something to generate electricity so what is the efficiency like 80% 90% or something like that so dc generators are less efficient than ac generators then it is easy to change ac to dc and not the other way around okay and more important point i am going to tell you is this in the power generating station you you generate alternating current okay now this alternating current is transmitted uh, hundreds of kilometers okay like say 200 to uh, 300 kilometers at least uh, it is transported to the place of consumption like Uh, we in mumbai consume electricity but it is not generated in mumbai it is generated outside so the place of consumption is quite far and alternating current we saw that 11 kilovolt is uh, stepped up to 132 kilovolt and then transmitted so that can be easily done in an alternating current but which is not possible in a direct current so that is the reason why alternating is much more efficient uh, than uh, direct current of course uh, you know if there is power generation on site like for example there are uh, houses which have solar panels so those houses are generating their own electricity and consuming uh, it over there so solar panels is converting solar energy into direct current okay and of course there is this uh, power backup the battery which gets charged and which stores energy which is used later okay but dc is not a good thing good choice if you are storing electricity somewhere and transmitting it via wires to a long distance the dc doesn't work like that okay so this is the end of this particular chapter uh, before we stop i am going to take some questions uh, in the exercise there is one question the solved question they have drawn a coil like this and there is a galvanometer and this is a uh, not and this is south okay so the question says uh, if you are dropping this magnet the magnet is going to pass through this so what will you observe when the magnet is inserted into the coil 
and second when magnet is taken out of the coil okay so as the magnet enters the coil there will be deflection in the galvanometer okay uh, that means the magnetic field associated with the coil or linked with the coil has increased and the magnet completely enters the coil the deflection becomes zero okay on taking the magnet out of the coil again there is momentarily deflection is observed in the galvanometer and then the direction uh, that is in the direction opposite to that of part a okay now i am going to demonstrate this again to you so this is uh, south entering it is deflecting to the right and now the south is moving away it is deflecting to the left so there is uh, you know like no deflection at the center so see this i am making uh, i'm continuously moving this magnet so at the center it becomes zero so try and understand one simple fact uh, over here uh, that there is a magnetic field associated with the coil so let me show you with the help of this only field lines so now you can see that the magnet has uh, the bar magnet is far away and the magnetic field is less now the magnetic field is maximum now it is becoming almost zero now again it is uh, maximum now it it will become zero so when this uh, magnet is kept moving now if you look at the i'll, I'll just remove this and keep a look uh, watch on the voltmeter the sorry the galvanometer so this is what is the question asking you what happens when the coil is dropped inside uh, sorry the magnet is dropped inside the coil okay the second part of the question how will the observation in part 1 change if the number of turns in the coil are increased okay so again have a look over here so uh, see this this is a this is a coil so you can see that the deflection is uh, maximum now if i do the same thing with this coil the pointer is uh, you know hardly going somewhere here is going somewhere here but when i do that for the uh, lower one the pointer is uh, hitting the total base okay so it is uh, it's hitting like here so what does that tell you more number of turns okay so there are less turns over here and there are more turns over here remember one thing do not use the word less number of coils that's wrong this is one coil okay but there are less turn this is also one coil but there are more turns in that okay fine so uh and the third part of the question c is that the direction of the current in the coil okay so if you uh, are inserting north in the magnet north in the coil okay so you can see that uh, there is this north pole so this face of the coil okay will have anti clockwise current in it and if you reverse the polarity it will be clockwise how do you know that by lenz's law so there are no numericals in this uh, in this chapter okay right so similar questions you should be comfortable to answer so based on on these properties all the questions that are there uh you should be able to answer that okay fine so since very few students are asking any questions let us start with the next chapter uh that is calorimetry now the cancellation for calorimetry again uh, uh you don't have uh certain parts i'll i'll show you that just a minute 
के क्लास टेन सिलेबस ट्वेंटी टू दिस इज फॉर फिजिक्स नाउ इफ यू लुक एट your textbook first page in my textbook it is page 261 that will show you the syllabus okay so what all things